Queens, a rivalry that some say is old as time itself. And NIP starting things off over on the T side of their map pick. Astralis leaning into this CT side start out of the gate and immediately three players over here towards the A side of the map going to look to exert some presence down here towards ramp early on in this round. Now you're going to note NIP very, very focused on looking to grab this mid control. This is something that we've seen from a lot of T side pistols on this new Vertigo, prioritizing, trying to work these Glocks into mid. I think there's a good reason for that. It's a pretty evenly matched range for you to go up against these USPs. And once you take this mid control, even forcing Glaive out of this position, you put a lot of pressure on this Astralis CT defense because suddenly they've got to rotate a man away from that A bomb site to hold in the elevator rooms. And so you have like, some pretty resounding effects on the overall kind of default here that Astralis were trying to run. Oh. Now with mid control taken, NIP, their options open to them. They're going to flash through the construction smoke to try and get some presence over here towards oh. the B bomb site, and Rez will double up. That's going to help because in the meantime, Magisk and Dupree have both found a kill apiece. Device gets spotted down in CT. Bomb now planted, and Astralis are going to find themselves on the clock here, but that kill certainly goes a long way. Oh, and the flash follows as well. Nork's picked up a pistol to try and fight it at a range, but Rez is trapped inside of the site. He's got nowhere to go. He's got to take a kill with him. He cannot and it's all down to Norg. Instant headshot from Zipex, and he will find three in a pistol round. Certainly the start that Astralis were looking for in this series. I, I, I'm glad we get to see, you know, these teams taking on Vertigo because, you know, not only have we got, you know, two of the top teams of the group, barring Fnatic, but of course, you know, teams that have loved to play Vertigo ever since it came out. And <clears throat> we've had a little bit of a here, it here in the road to Rio, but I feel like this is the the highest ranked game we've had it in so far. And so hopefully the level will display that as well. NIP going for a mid to be split in that round. Astralis, they get bogged down in fighting the B ramp and that's when they get uh, caught from the sidelines, but they're still gonna find the retake and NIP forcing up with good AKs in the second round. Yeah, it really is a treat to get to watch Astralis on this new Vertigo. I feel like they, they, they're like a team that can't help but set a meta up, right? Like <laughs> they, they just seem to be the guys to keep an eye on. Uh, like, when it comes to establishing kind of how, how a lot of these maps are played and our new ways of thinking. And I think, you know, with all the sweeping changes that have gone on to Vertigo, Astralis, their cup's kind of running over with uh, with new little things they could look to try here in this map. And for Astralis, it's, a, it's not so much as an accidental renaissance, it's an accidental meta, right? Like you've accidentally changed this up just Ooh. by sheer determination, sheer pressure, which is what we're seeing in middle right now. I'm just going to land a sweet grenade kill there on Electro. And speaking of sweetening the pot, now Astralis find themselves up 4v5. Now, I wanted to point out before we get too deep into this round that a player named Nock has been holding his own within this NIP lineup. Yeah, I mean, you know, on this map as well, he got the uh, the first Vertigo 6k ace team kill Beat round. Beat Stewie. First yeah. on Vertigo. Yeah, what's up now, Stu? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well... No, man, I'm still out for revenge for the time you replaced me at the caches. So there's the reason why that exists. And uh, over here in this round, NIP. Grouping up over at the A ramp, looking to get into the site. Nork is holding for Ooh. this peak from Zipex. Now, oh Device boy. is the scary player here in this round. He's hidden at the sandbags. He swings on out. They didn't check him. And that's oh, their man. downfall. Device with two, Dupree. Coming in on the flank, able to mop that round up. Astralis, they deal with the force buy of Nip admirably. Yeah, and that's because they force AKs, right? They get uh, a bunch of guns in that round, and that means Nip have no utility, so no Molotov for the sandbags. And it's so often you see teams, if they don't have util for the sandbags, they just don't clear it because, you know, it's so easy to just... Uh, walk up on the site and it's so difficult to clear sandbags without being exposed to everything, right? You either clear it from the back rail or you clear it from the site. And well, while you're on the site, you're focused on CT and elevator, the places where you know the CTs are. So yeah, maybe uh, NIP needs to stay a little bit more aware of that position moving forward, but I don't think it's one that Astralis will frequent once we hit rifle rounds. Dupree has taken some dastardly uh, aggression in this round. He's pushed all the way through to T-Spawn. And he's been spotted as well. Nork trying to hold the line. Dupree can just bail here and hold the uh, the connector instead. Lecro okay. will stop him though. Luckily enough, Glaive is still down bottom to make sure nothing else can go on. He'll smoke it off. He'll give NIP the room to move and just hold onto the site instead. When these changes were brought into Vertigo, we had a lot of pros speculating that controlling this like B main area is something that teams might look to do. Now, I don't know about you guys, but from the Vertigo games that we have seen, yeah. I haven't really seen that set as a precedent. You know, it feels like instead 
instead that B site is held a lot more from just passively back inside of the site. And I think that's largely for the reason that taking that B main control feels like a real gamble to begin with, right? Yeah. If you go down there and suddenly you're swarmed by five guys holding that position, then it can all fall apart. However, I think if one team were maybe going to look to stay true to that and try and figure out some new ways to play around this B bomb site, it's going to be a team like Astralis. So I'm really for curious sure. because in that round there, right, it is Dupree pushing in through the B main with that fast flank into T spawn. Admittedly, only gets one kill. But that's oh a promising God. sign for us to maybe get to see some of this B main aggression. Yeah, I, I think it is going to be coming. You have to remember this map is, is new in terms of the changes. And so, of course, it's going to take time for teams to figure things out. But what, what that does lead to, if you can take that deep B aggression, uh, I, I think the biggest problem with old bottom B uh, for Vertigo is you would never want to push past a stairwell on a flank because you have your left and your right open. And it's basically a gamble. It's a 50-50. Like, you know, is he on the side I'm going to hard check or is he not? And, and that's basically you gambling with the round on a 50-50, which isn't isn't nice. But here, it gives you the option to just take a straight up fight. You know which side they're going to be on as long as you've cleared the left and you always will be if you're coming down the stairs. So I think it gives a lot more opportunity for aggression. And that means we don't need to see teams stack the B site as much, which obviously seems to be the meta right now, at least with B rushes being more attainable than at least they were before. Now, on the other side of things, a very topical situation would be that of the Ninjas of Pajamas, currently not having three players with kills. Ooh. And I think that's going to be another round for Twist doing without. Device cleans him up pretty easily in a round with guns over here on the Nip side. They're losing their fights here on the A ramp early on, and that's not going to bode well. Just three players alive in Rez, Plopsky, and Lekro. Plopsky's got his sights set on this B site. Maybe they'll give him a kill. Maybe they won't. Astralis playing it real smart. Dupree edges back out to the other side of the fight. And he finds it easily with M4. 2v5. And this has gone horribly wrong thus far for the nip. Yeah. Uh, one thing that's cool as well about that B position is is the, the wood that you can hide behind. Because while you see T spam that, right, to make sure CT's not hiding, it goes both ways. If you want to peek B, but you don't want to be too aggressive, you can just spam the wood and wall bang into the choke point. You know, it's minimal or not minimal risk because obviously you can get spammed back, but it's, it's it's less risk than just taking a straight up aim duel. And you can, of course, just fire a couple of pot shots and fall back off of spawn. So, you know, there, there are different ways to play things. We've seen uh, G2 uh, or not G2, Godsend rather, boosting players up towards that that wooden position on the T side. So I think that's going to be made you know, pretty common. Hopefully we want to valve fix the clipping there because that is still an issue. But yeah, I saw like, time. I saw there was an update for Vertigo where it yeah. said they added a clipping mask to something. It wasn't that. But I don't think it was that, no. no. I um, thought it was as well initially. It would have made the most sense, right? Yeah, it, it definitely seems more common as well with certain models, like certain agent models. I feel like a guilty of clipping through that a lot more. And remember, we're at the majors, yeah, so, so agent agents models are allowed. Are allowed. However, um, we are seeing some teams, especially in the NA side of thing, have like gentlemen's agreements to not use them. That was in the yeah, yeah. NBA game the other day. I, I do kind of wish that, you know, like Valve would see that, that if teams are having agreements to not use the agent skins, then maybe, you know, that's... Because they've already been pretty receptive of, uh, you know, you saw like that they're, they're, they're considering i think it was they're considering trialing the 12k uh ot money where did oh, they? i Goodness. swear i saw a post about that but maybe not maybe i'm wrong okay um yeah. but you know like I, I don't know like this this is a time now where considering all the changes that would have been going into this major things like the agent skins and stuff i think you know like one upside to the major getting delayed and having this and having this format instead to fill the void is it's like a good trial run for these new little systems in place like the yeah. agent skins but this round anyway it Ooh. wasn't meant to get this close to begin with somehow some way nip have actually turned it in their favor and they'll put their first up on the board that they will and right now both of you spitting a little bit of fire a couple flames coming out of Harry's mouth, and I like to attribute that not to the hair color that he has on his head, but more so just the intelligence inside of that head itself. Now, we're going to put you guys to the test as we do around here. We have our own little reindeer game, so I'm going to have to ask the chat to use either hashtag Harry or hashtag Hugo. Now, I want to know who you think is spitting the most fire out of these two. Now, we're going to be showing those results live on air with our new little toys, so... Make sure to keep your eyes peeled for that. It takes just a few seconds for all that to come in. Meanwhile, all of the action coming in right now, and certainly Dupree is going to be regretting how this round has started out. Oh, that nade hit twist, and he's going to get hurt. Zitnix was ready for the repeak right off of that one, and Astralis are ready in this round. Four on four. Plopsky's trying to dodge. He is low health, and he needs to get out of there before a spam comes through. 
One uh, flash that I've seen more teams throwing in NIP throw in the previous round was uh, Spropsky stayed in spawn and he, because of how the map's designed, he threw a flash out of T-spawn up in the air and it blinded an aggressive A player on that site playing towards the ramp. So I'll, I'll call it out when I see it next for NIP and hopefully we'll be able to show that. It's kind of an interesting flashbang and it did work wonderfully. NIP now setting up towards EA site. It's their bread and butter, but Astralis, they are the butchers, the bakers, and everything in between. They have three men here. AWP as well and device. Smoke coming down, and NIP setting up the execute. Simplex is fighting in front of it, and if he can get multiple kills from this position, that would be excellent. Oh, a little gap in the smoke allows him a tiny chance at a one way, but Lecro is quick at dealing with him. Magis now trying to hold the line Ooh. and hold it down. He shall. Plopsky. 1v2 now as he moves into the bomb site. 12 points of health to his name. Bomb on his back, but is, is he ready for Glaive over here in CT? He's first trying to deal with Magis. No kills getting offered up to Plopsky. And he is looking for them. He's trying to nullify where these players could be. It is the presence of Glaive and CT that should have this round dead to rights, even if Magis falls apart and he does not. Three kills for Magis on the defense and a fifth round on the board for Astralis. They're going to go five and one up. Reinvestment back in from NIP. Going to have everything they could possibly need into this round. And look at Magis. He plays it so well as well, right? Like, he's the only man left up on the A site. His teammates smoked off, cut out of the site. And not only does he hold his own and get two, but he hides back. After he gets that double and puts uh, NIP in the one on two, he hides short. He goes behind the smoke. He waits for Astralis to get that information. And he doesn't offer up an immediate trade. That makes the clutch even harder for NIP. So, yeah, Astralis really holding the line right now, as is Harry, 54%, looking good. You've got the supporters back on your side, Harry. Good stuff there, and I, I really do attribute that to his tweets and, and whatnot. So anyway, back into it we go. Harry, do us the honors with all your massive knowledge. Yeah, I you know, massive knowledge, that is something I think I might have. I think, at least. <laughs> he doesn't know. I also think I'm a little indecisive. Maybe, though. Not I'm sure. not so sure. Magisk over here looking in towards mid. And he's trying to spot some feet. Bit of a foot fetish on Magisk. Decides that actually he'll drop down from this box. Lecro's allowed to get back in towards T-spawn. Nork now pushing up through the short side. Zipnik's holding this tiny little pixel gap to try and spot the headshot. Meanwhile, Device has been boosted up on top of these boxes here. He's got himself in a pretty good position for a one and done. They can't fight that until they're out onto the ramp itself or if they aggress right up there through the catwalk. But here we go. Device is going to get his dream. And that's going to be the Ninjas of Pajamas running Ooh. right into him. Here comes the execute onto the A site. Device looking for a kill. Smoke's blocking him out. Really good stuff there from Nip to drop that. Meanwhile, Plofsky with a kill of his own. This bomb's going to get planted by Lepro. This creates a big problem and a retake situation for Astralis. Ooh, Lecro, surely he not, he gets out, he gets away alive. And that's going to be very important for NIP holding on to this plant. They may be low, but they've got higher numbers. Astralis looking to focus on that bomb defusal, but time is already ticking away. And NIP are laying down the pain. Twister's pushed back in with half health. Glaive has swapped positions in the site. He's going to tap the bomb, can't stick it. Surely Twist should spam this one away. He's just gambling as his teammates fall. He has to spam in case they're on the defuse. They are not, and he's realized it. Running right back, the time is ticked and the uh -oh. kills are coming through, flying through the smoke for NIP. Zendik's coming in for the save and getting away with the AWP, but it's double rounds on the board for the Swedes. We have been seeing those set grenades onto the default box from the back of CT become so common that teams now are having to fake bomb plants before they even go for them on those A sites, right? Throwing the smoke execute, running to the site, faking it out in the open, and then running back, right? Um, this does two things. It's firstly, it forces Astralis to spam the smoke with their rifles, and then you can get it in while they're reloading. But it also means nades are going to uh, land in the in the default spot. And then if you avoid that, you can go back in once Astralis are out of utility. So we're seeing stuff like that for an IP. Plopsky's uh, molly, also the molly from Astralis forces Plopsky off the bomb, and he has to do it later. It's still not a problem for an IP, but if Astralis use that utility right, as they often do, it could be moving forward. I think you're onto something there, Hugo. I also think that I want to get everybody in attendance here this evening via the interwebs to get involved as well. Hashtag ESL1 is what you're going to be using over on the Twitter sphere. Let us know what you think about the matchup at hand. Let us know what you think and rather where you're watching, who you're watching with. 
really anything. Just send it to us. Use the hashtag. You know how it goes. Maybe if you're if you're diligent about it, if you're good about it, then perhaps it ends up on screen. We never really know about these things. What we do know is this is a very troublesome buy from the side of Astralis. Yeah, it really is. I mean, they've got util, but that's about it. Device on the orb and one M4 enclave. He is being boosted. I love this as well. It's very risky considering you can't see close. You can't sh really see short. You can just get peaked at any point. So Glaive is hoping that that's not the case. Oh dear. Do they want to get back up? Do they want to do it again? Because of course that noise does get heard if they fall off. But with the Molotov coming in, they know that there's a player close and they want to make the best of this boost. Glaive, he is slippery today. And uh. I think he just spotted the player close as well. That's information for Astralis. They need to enact on it right now and they will. Molotov keeps Twist back on this A site. But NIP still have three here, ready to party. NIP have done a great job of holding on to all five of their smokes as well, right? They throw in three of these now. We've already seen how instrumental mm. these smokes are in the post plant. Ooh. So Nick's going to find one there through one of these smokes that's gone down. Device trying to find some chance orb shots in through the smoke. Lecro actually gets up on the site boxes. And now re-smokes have had to go down for an IP. Oh, no. So Nick's in with another kill on the back of this Deeg. And with it, he's denied the bomb plant. Now tapping in those numbers once again. Ooh, oh, Nick. Device tags that crow a little bit there, but not enough to find the kill. He's still alive inside of the bomb site, but a man advantage resting with Astralis. And this is where, if you're an IP, they tried to hold on to as Ooh, many no. smokes as they could, and they've got none left in this post plant. There's just this one down on the bomb, and that was thrown in from Astralis to give them an avenue to get on this bomb. Zipic's starting to defuse it now. Lecro has to get him off a bit. They're spamming. And even though they get the kill, oh, Zipnik still gets the defuse off in time. NIP not able to field a third round here as that one slips through their fingers. And I, and I feel at least with the pace that we're watching this game get played out on the A site, we're getting a lot of sort of like grimy attempts at defuses, right? Which is what this site is asking for in its current state and how it's currently structured. Yeah, it definitely, right? Like just Zipnik's just getting on that bomb and he has an excellent round as well. Three kills of the Deagle, smoke shots on some of them, knocking Nork 51 floors down to the ground. And yeah, just getting that defuse in the smoke. You love to see it. And IP get very, very close to stopping that one. A second's difference would have been and everything, but sometimes it doesn't go your way. And Astralis, they're the best at making it not go your way. 6-2 up on the CT side, back in with a force by victory. And, and I love it when teams buy kits on eco rounds like that, or at least half by rounds, where you still feel like you have a chance to win it, right? They had yeah. an orb, they had an M4 that got removed immediately, and they had three pistols, and you buy a kit on that, and you win the round because of it. If they didn't have a kit, they wouldn't have won the round. So Let, respect to Astralis for that. Let's watch Device here and see where he gets this peek at. And, and he's really holding a tight angle here, but this is one of the center choke points right out into mid. So he's got a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. Luckily for him, there's not too many people around to hang out with. It's just Lecro on the other side of the wall there. Meanwhile, Nip looking for some sort of opening here. Yeah, they're going to clear the sandbags, which is, you know, a nice change. Not, uh, not always been a, a choice being made. Now, Nork is jumping up, but look at Dupree, man. He is ready. He's watching for it. Now, he's not going to see anything yet, but even a turn from the player getting boosted up could lead to his body clipping. I hope we don't see any of that today. Let's see if Dupree spots March and sees the head. And after he sees the head, he can just spam the body. He won't commit to it. He lets not get up. And now the commitment's coming through for NIP. They're going to push the boundaries. Dupree's in a smoke. Eight he he uh, HP and he's going to get removed eventually. Yeah, Glaive trying to stand tall inside of the site. He gets away with a lot of damage, but only one kill. Lecro oh, wow. there to piece that round together with a hat trick. And a third on the board for NIP. They get into that B site, they get the job done, and they bring economy of Astralis crashing to the ground, heading into this follow-up round. Yeah, now we're really looking at a devastated economy for the side of Astralis. You know, they, they don't have anything to show on the outset of that round. And what they are going to show themselves, some deagles, an ump, two smokes, and a flash. Now, what's the play here? What's the call? How do they do that strange for change sort of setup? Zipex is going to be drawing a fight out here on the A ramp. You can tell that Nip want to respect this too. They're not going to be the type to say, oh, well, you know, they're on some sort of force or eco here. We're not going to run right into them. This is a straws for Pete's sake. Yeah, I mean, they already lost an eco two rounds ago. Yep. Or two an eco, so. 
three of those guns being Deegs in that round, and now Astralis have four in play. So even more worrying, perhaps. We'll see if that holds the same weight as... Obviously, there's a far less investment in this round around said Deagles. Look at Astralis on the mini-map. Mini They're like moths to a flame creeping towards this A-bomb site. They've made the right call, and IP are coming. We're going to see this boost again. Device getting in position, setting Zipnix up. Oh, he sees them, and he takes them out as well. I don't know how we haven't seen this boost before. It feels obvious now, but it's excellent. And Astralis... A man advantage, make it two, not again, not like this, it's only Deagles after all. Twist is going to trade, this one-way smoke that Astralis have been throwing down round after round has been at least read by NIP. They've been killing Glaive and Zipnix at that position in the past and they'll do it again, but Jisk is gone. Zipnix is hiding inside of his short side smoke and Popsky should see his legs, he will. He's going to take him down and NIP are going to walk back to B, this is a great call. Dupree is going to get caught with his knife out and that's going to be a free entry into the B-bomb site for NIP. Glaive has got to run. Yeah, Zipnix almost making this round feel doable, but now Glaive has got to answer a hell of a lot. Arm with just a deagle, no armor. That one bullet sends his aim flying. NIP, a fourth round on the board. They deal with that threat well. It wouldn't surprise me if we see a bit more early aggression from Astralis, right? Just in an effort to try and get rid of some of this utility that NIP have been able to rely on in so many of these rounds. We already kind of got a hint of a bit more aggression there in that one with two players pushing the extremities of the B bomb site. Zipex even trying to wrap through short. But to no avail. I think, you know, like if you look at someone like Device, maybe you could try and challenge this ramp area. At the very, very least, you're hoping yeah. to bait out some of this utility because I think one of the problems that Astralis are having right now is with, with these A executes in particular, right? NIP have just been able to hold on to five smokes every single time. They throw down the initial volley of three to get them control of the site. And then they keep two for the post plant and you can just keep replenishing those smokes. And that buys you so much time. Oh, this is messy. Yeah, this, this is, is not awful. how this was meant to go down. Yeah, and, and that's Astralis jiggling on that wood and they dinked Popsky twice through it. I think it was Glaive just like running left and right and uh, not giving an actual fight to NIP, but still getting damage off. Now, NIP are fully grouped here. And so they just have to watch their back. They have to hold position steadfast because Astralis could be anywhere. They could have pushed, they could have flanked. So NIP don't want to lose to USPs and they still shouldn't. Gonna move up with the Molotovs being laid down by Twist. That's towards the generator side of things. One at the back of the site as well. Gonna force a player out of position, you would think, if it's landed correctly. It does, but it just goes out wide. Still one man at the back of the pillar, and Dupree... Oh, no! Oh, dear! What Ooh. is happening? There's two players on 10 health. Dupree's just found two dinks to put Astralis in this round. Surely not a conversion, though. Rez and Norka solo, but they will turn it around and find the killing blow. If there was a round to do it in, it was that one right there. Dupree gives them the avenue to do it, but ultimately, it doesn't get done. And now we see Astralis just ahead by one round. Nip have clawed back into this one. And there's no arguing about that. Yeah, 6-2 to 6-5. It's been a good uh, few rifle rounds for NIP up to five. No AWP on device to take that ramp peak that you were wanting, Harry. And here's that spawn smoke from Lecra. Will he hang around for the flash? No. That lands on short side. We often see teams throw that smoke and then follow up with a flash, but this time they don't want B. They want uh, A. They want B, rather. Glaive is hanging around after he's already lost his teammate. And Zipex dead at the other side of the map as well. This is not a good start for Astralis. We're relying on their individuals to dr uh, drag them out of this five on three. It does seem like the ninjas and pajamas have warmed up to hitting some shots a little bit later in this half. Ooh. But Majisk is not going to hit that one. Lecro finds Majisk after he dodges a flash. Now Glaive is just waiting on the other side of this mid gap. However, I don't think they want to play, and they're not. Glaive just offers himself up to Rez. Uh oh, that's the bomb. Yeah, that's an awkward situation. Device drops the bomb over there towards A-Ramp. Now, he's got to defend it all by himself. They're going to close in from the A-Site side, three deep. Big Grenade's going to do a considerable Ooh. amount of damage, but he's going to have to hold on tight. Uh-oh. Yeah, he's thinking they're coming from the flank, and uh -oh. that is, well, not the case. NIP have already got the bomb back, and they're going to be running to the site. Rez gets a kill through the smoke, so it doesn't really matter. 
A device trying to isolate fights there on fights that weren't to come from the bottom of T-Spawn. So NIP not only reach six on the T-side, but they break Astralis' money right back. At the start, this felt like a confident Astralis game, but now NIP, they've come to play. They're not messing around. Lecro with some strong rounds as well, finding a lot of key opening kills for NIP. It feels like we've seen more Ecos for Astralis than buy rounds. They're back to Deeks. Yeah, this was 5-1 in favor of the Danes at one point. So NIP have done a stellar job of tying this up. Now the Deagles, once again, finding some success early on. Looking to get quickly negated by Nork. Magis has retrieved an AK and is continuing to push the extremities here. And he might wish he didn't. Twist is able to mop him up as a result. Man advantage lying back in favor of NIP. That pressure somewhat removed on the back of losing a man early. Yeah. And they're just holding, waiting for these fights to come to them. That's a bit unfortunate. The bullet clips into the uh, into the uh, dumpster. skip or dumpster. Is that what you call them in uh, in NA? Are they just? I'll have to check it out again. Yeah. Look like a look like a dumpster. Nonetheless, here it is. Nip with their eyes set on the prize at the B site. Here's Debbie, oh. and he's got a headshot on a knock. That's a one deke. Let's see if he's got any more up his sleeve. He's going to reposition himself to the other side of the mid gap and keep his eyes trained over there towards B. That's going to prove to be fatal. Lekro and Plopsky make quick work of the remaining defenders over here of Astralis, and it's just Glaive with a deagle in his hands. No armor, no kit, barely any health. And this round is all but done. I say that, it does end, so imagine that. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Zipex at the back of the site. I think we're going to see a lot of use from that position on the pillars, right? It's it's one where you're covered at least, and it looks like no one's there, but it, it's got to be cleared. And even though he's in a good position, and it feels like he can wait for the bomb plant, once he loses device, and once that mid split comes in, he has to peek because he knows he's going to get shot from the side. So, kind of forces his hand in that one, and it's going to put NIP back up to seven, continuing on this T side. Taking no prisoners. Glaive tagged heavily towards a B bomb site early. He's going to have to fall off. Twist is pushing up short side, and Zipix is there. He's been the hero for Astralis in this game, really, but he's not going to have any say into this one. Device has gone down early. The orb is in the hands of Dupree. The wall bang is in, and Zipix is going to get caught from the sidelines. His reload, as he fell back, was heard by Twist. So he walked right through that smoke and took the frag. He did. Nip now have an open door into this site. Majisk is going to try to get a grenade off towards the planner once he hears it, or at least stop them from getting so close. And he lands it right directly on Twist's dome piece. However, with five live, the money in a precarious situation here for Astralis. They're going to back out. This is already the save call. We're going to see an eighth on the board for ninjas. This round comes to a close. They haven't got the bomb planted yet. Oh dear, Magisk was trying to get himself hidden behind the, uh, I don't even know what you would call it. Like the, the red ribbony thing. Pretty good name for it, I red think. Red ribbony thing. Now the caution uh, tape banner type setup. Yeah, man, Defense. that was much better. You know, like it's something like that, right? You know what I mean? He's hiding behind the little tassels and it's a pretty great spot to hide in. Yeah. Can echo that? But not for Magisk, not in that round there. Team Pre, he'd love to hold on to this AWP, he really would, but whether or not he's oh, going to no. get to is a completely oh. different factor. And the answer is no. Twist delivering with three kills. Secures that frag onto the saving Dupree. And Astralis, even though they dedicate immediately to that three-man save, they don't even get a chance to attempt the retake. They still lose absolutely everyone heading into the last round of this first half. Yeah, Nip, you pick... Or excuse me, Harry, you pick Nip. And uh, right now they're... You know, they're making you a happy guy. Yeah, and what's worrying about this is when we did see NIP beat Astralis on Vertigo last, it was the CT side that was getting them so many rounds. It was those A retakes. So the fact that NIP have already put eight, maybe nine, okay. in the half. Oh, Plopsky, he is just sending them home, sending them packing on B. This really does bode well for NIP now, right? Like, they're in a position where, you know, I thought they would take Vertigo anyway, but... Yeah, this could be even more than that. Let's see. Let's not count Astralis out in that second half, but maybe in this round, it's a Deagle and a UMP on a retake against the round or the half ending. 
Nork, he's got a double setup, he's got a crossfire, but Rez is cross with this fire. Mm. He's going to push right forward and try and force fights. Lekker on the back line. Lekker has been coming in on all these mid lurks for NIP. And when the B site gets taken, Estrella set up for retake and then Lekker stabs in the back. It's not like him even splitting B with them. He's just coming in almost on this lurk uh, just to make sure Astralis don't have a chance. And boy, they do not. They go 5 1 up, they fall 9 6. Not the best first half for Astralis, but we'll see if they can recover. They're known to do so. Join us after the break for that. The SL1 Road to Rio, powered by Intel, and moreover, powering over Astralis is the Ninjas of Pajamas. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Trace. I have Harry and Hugo with us. And one person that we are certainly missing in this moment in time, Sarah. So if you be on the lookout for her, let us know if you hear her. We haven't heard her in a while. I haven't heard her in the break screen. But one thing I would love to hear is some pistols ringing off here for Astralis. Give us this competitive game, and let's see what they've got here on their T side. What do they have to offer in a pistol round? Yeah, this is where the brain power for Astralis can truly be, you know, uh, unearthed, reached, and, uh, you know, shown in this game. Hopefully, they have a T side start. Otherwise, NIP could certainly run away with this one. 
Twist is waiting close in middle. Could catch players jumping up. And there is the first. But just walks into the headshot angle. And Twist can just fall back. Molotov as well. Really just trying to hold Astralis out of this sight. But they have no fear. Maybe they should do. Rez has found the second man. Astralis going to bail from middle and take the B-bomb site by Storm. The bomb coming in late on this flank as to not get dropped in the middle area. But NIP are surrounding B. Yeah, Molly going to force Twist out from behind the bomb site. However, do be sure to keep your eye on Plopsky, who's hidden himself behind this smoke to try and assemble a boost nice and prompt. As they throw a man up on top, it's going to be Lecro firing shots over the top of this smoke. Zipnix is trying to run away, uh. and he does manage to survive. Now, will he survive much longer? Glaive, meanwhile, running Ooh. the gauntlet back towards the A-bomb site, doesn't survive the journey. Oh. Zipnix is no more lucky than he is, and NIP, they take the pistol round. More importantly than that, they take it flawlessly. Now, Hugo, we look at these second rounds. We've already said, like, hey, you know, this conversion round, it means everything. Especially when you look now, you see a player like Plopsky picks up an M4 and the rest of Nip by around that, given that they won that first round. You know, so what sort of situation are we looking at here if Nip do pick this up and Astralis can't seem to put it on the board? Well, the question is, do Astralis force, right? Firstly, I would say no. You're at a real disadvantage, a real deficit right now. So if anything, Astralis are smart players, unless you have some some sick second round here, is to is to take a full eco and get guns in the third. We did see a really nice second round force buy from, uh, I, I think it was Godsent um, on this T side after they lost pistol. It was Tech Nines, it was Armor, and it was a far I think it wasn't God said now that I say it, but regardless, it was, a, it was Tech Nine Armor Util. It was a fast mid take with two coming up the B stairs and just a quick B split. But as shown by the pistol round, I mean, we've only seen one defensive round for NIP, but they were they were set up for that. That was their entire game plan, playing around the mid to B. So they were ready for exactly what Astralis had in that pistol. And I feel like that is like certainly going to be the meta somewhat. If you don't hear those immediate A footsteps that you will be able to come from the A site, you know, four or five players running up ramp on that very loud wood, well, you'll just go, okay, they're not hitting A, so watch your mid to B, because that seems to be the go-to uh, at the moment with teams, you know, testing out that new B site, testing the, the limitations of it and what you can get away with. So for Astralis right now, who are on a bit of a tech timeout, what are they? What are they wondering? What are they wanting to test with this T side? I I still think it's going to be Glocks though. That would be the safe decision. But really, regardless of how this one goes, NIP are going to be up 11-6, and that is a scary reality for Astralis. Yeah, albeit it is the Nips map pick, the Nips. I say the ninjas in pajamas, but. Perhaps we also take a look around the league itself because there's a lot going on here within this road to Rio. Movie Star Riders taking on G2. They're on the map of one. And currently G2 are up nine to six. As you see the match minute come through, we should be jumping back into our game momentarily. Now G2, Amanek currently 3-0 and in opening duels over there, 16-8. and eight. He's putting a little bit of pain on the Movie Star Riders. A little bit further down the road on this pathway to Rio. Copenhagen Flames in north. We've identified this as the battle for Copenhagen. Danish team squaring off. They're going to find themselves on Inferno. And just kicking off the second half. Refresh leading the way for the Copenhagen Flames, 14-3. And what is a 9-8 scoreline currently in the first map of the series. But we're back, baby. We're back with Astralis and Nip. Woo! Yeah, and thank God, Astralis, they go for Glocks, right? Safe decision. Use this round as attack. Take a breather, take a moment, and figure out your follow-up round. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Astralis just fall back into what they know, which is, you know, these AE site executes. Maybe default early, hold the mid push, hold the B push, go late A with a bomb, throw the wall of smokes, try and fall back into a post plant. But, but as said earlier, we know NIP are really good at retaking A. They have their utility to play that retake. Popsky, bad timing, just falls off, and Astralis are moving up. He's not going to know any of this. They are crowding him, but they line up, and he knocks him oh down. My. That's easy for Popsky. An ace, Woo! no problem. Looks good on paper. Not a lot of fighting force out of Astralis in that one. Good on Plopsky. That is an ace. 445 total damage in that previous round, and I think it was the last bullet that got the last kill, too. So it all kind of comes together full circle here, and Plopsky, well... I got the chance to meet his parents when we were at DreamHack Masters Malma, which was, uh, it was interesting. You know, I didn't yeah. quite expect that. They approached me as I was coming out of a Joe and the Juice. And nice. they uh, they went on to tell me the full story here. They showed me some pictures of when Plopsky had met his heroes in Nip. Ooh. And lo and behold, now he's playing on Nip. So it's a cool storyline. 
definitely something I would I would love to uh, to share more with the community. Yeah, no, the biggest question I have about that actually, Trace, is um, how was the juice? It was pretty wow. good. Yeah. It was uh, Joe's Green Mile. Big fan of Joe and the Juice. Yeah. Haven't had it quite some time, but maybe no one has. Who knows? Either way, Monarch pushing all the way through. Zipex gonna feel oh, his boy. pain. The MP9s don't stop there. Finally, a trade from Device is gonna put Lecro out and really slow this down. But this was a hot and heavy round for the CT side. They push all the way up, Ooh. super aggressive on the A ramp. And look at Rez. He has made the read ahead of time. He began a rotation. Now he's walking and so are Astralis. No one knows, but NIP certainly have the gamble, the guess, and they've got it correct. Astralis are walking into the two-man setup. Now this still should be an Astralis round if they can continue to trade as lots of utility is available. But Popsky's on full health and we just saw him ace the previous round. So on the B-bomb site, he is going to be ready. Uh oh, this grenade could kill device. Oh, Rez is gone. The line up in for Plopski. And oh dear, they wanted to duck dive back down. That nade oh. could do it all. Glaive gets caught. It's only device left. In a 1v1 now, this round turns very, very sour for Astralis. It was looking good. This was a bonus round attempt from NIP. And Plopski has locked down this B-bomb site wow. single-handedly. He's done it again. An ace in the second round. Three kills for him there. That's eight kills in the last two rounds of play for Plopski. 12 to 6 on the board for Nip. And no money left in those Astralis bank accounts. It's going to have to be... A partial investment round at the very best for Astralis here. It's actually so sick that Rez dies first there because that actually makes Astralis commit. They get the kill, they go, guys, B's clear. And then they push in and Plopsky mows them down again as they line up on the stairwell. The bomb dropped first and Astralis, they back up. They wanted to go A, but then they realized they couldn't. They had to walk into the firing line and they'll do so again. This time, well, match this. He's going to find an opener. He's going to find an entry, but the grenade again could be the end of Astralis. There is one onto Zipex. Device responds with a deagle. He's up on the short side and he's, well, all that remains or remained maybe as the tense changes, NIP pick up 13. Quite the shot there with the deagle, though, all things considered in the situation where it was about to just turn into mass chaos. It's, uh, I believe it was Knock that hits Dupree there with the deagle and that was, um, it's a nice shot, and ultimately a round that Astralis had no say-so in. Yeah, I mean, nice, a couple of nice kills here and there, but, you, you know, we can't be sleeping on the reality here, Trace. It's 13-6. It's MIP in full control of their map pick here against Astralis. Of course, Nuke is coming up, but that's not one that NIP have shied away from. So, yeah, I think there's a, a really good case to be made that NIP could be upsetting this series, but I'm still holding out for a three-mapper here. Yeah. That is the case. Now, playing around with the smoke, device is boosted up. That smoke's gone now, and they're just gonna hold fast, potentially avoiding some pre-aimed crosshairs from the side of the ninjas in pajamas. Someone dropped a plate there towards the top of ladder room, which ultimately make a little bit noise in the game. And we've got device leading the charge up the A ramp. The small top is gonna force knock off just a little bit. But he's holding fast AWP. He wants to stay up close and personal with it. Really taking a shot here, falling back to a secondary position, and then so forth, so on. But if he can stop them here, he's bought a lot of time for Nip to get a rotation in. God, uh, yeah, they're still spamming, though. They're still shooting that metal, and there is damage to be done through it, despite it not being wooden. Device swinging, and Nork is ready. Rez has gone from the site. Astralis own it now, and they've got to lock down the short side also. Oh, Ooh. dear. Nork goes wide. He's struck the bomb again, and NIP have full control. He's going to try and run through the smoke and escape. Good luck. Not going to happen. But just holds onto it, and he holds down the plant as well. It will go down. 60 health. Molotov's at his feet, but he smokes it off and tries to escape through it. Does get away successfully. The retake is on, but they're already a man down. Oh, Lecro trying to go up and over, and he even spots Magisk over at short side. Dupree is rotated into this position as well. He's quick to get out of there. Doesn't want to load all their eggs into one basket over here at the short side, and Magisk is doing a stellar Ooh, job of holding down the fort. It feels like right now Magisk is the only man with a permit to kill in this game. Over here towards the A-bomb site, he charges in, he bests his Nork again in the head-to-head. -head. He was able to do it with the Deeg in the round prior, and this time he continues hunting down the AWP on the other side, right? It was him barreling through that site smoke that allowed this whole round to get turned on its head. Magisk delivering three and the man to plant the bomb, an MVP in a lot of respects in that round there for Astralis. Uh, yeah, they messed that smoke up. 
pretty royally, but not going to get punished <laughs> for it. Not the end of the world. Dupree now looking Ooh. to get out down here towards B-Ramp, and he is going to check straight up. Plopski, though, oh somehow, someway wins that fight out. Do not know how. Dupree checked it. What's he even checking? He's looking at the sky. Oh. You do hate to see that for Astralis and NIP. There's just no liberties they aren't taking in this game right now. No one's safe. And look, man, they're using this Astralis boost against them. Rez is the man throwing up on it. Oh, Zipex just sprayed through. Oh, yeah, get out yeah, of there. Get they go. out of there. And they'll disassemble that boost. It was fun while it lasted, but that grenade does a lot of damage. Majisk finds himself on 61, still firmly clutching these these weapons on the side of Astralis. They want to pressure a little bit towards A, perhaps even find themselves on the site for a plant. Under a minute left on the clock, they've even got time Ooh. to traverse back should they want to, and it looks like that's what they're they're feeling right now in yeah. this moment. Glaive over here towards the mid-gap has bought him a lot of time. Glaive is the like such a swing player right now for Astralis. He kind of decides the outcome of this whole round based Ooh. on how successful his mid-presence is. And they were hoping, right, with Glaive holding mid and Astralis making the noise of a rotation back, that he could catch players looking to migrate from that A bomb site over towards mid and B. And he did deliver one, which at the very, very least has kind of disrupted this NIP hold at the A bomb site. They all get caught fixated on Glaive, and that's allowed Astralis okay. to work their way up in towards A. Twist is now left in this clutch. A 1v2 required from him. He swings on out, spots Zipex inside of the bomb site, catches him going up and over, but the nade from Magisk is there to solidify an eighth round on the board for the Danes. Yeah, unsurprisingly, the Magic Man, you know, pulling out the wand there for Astralis and doing what he do, uh, does best. He's been firing it off all game long. This is the first kill of the round that Dupree really look for. And, you know, pretty fair fight, you would think, but Plopsky gets ahead of it. I'm sure Momsky and Popsky are very, very proud of Flopsky. Holding it down here in the B site so far. He's been one of the main, main defenders so far on the CT side for Nip. And Astralis know what's going on, right? Dupree's brought up a MAC-10. They are fast flashing him into B. They know that NIP are on eco, and Astralis look to take away as many guns as they can. Make it nice and clean. Full USP, the USPs. More like oofs in this round, as we don't expect any kills, really, from the Ninjas. Careful, double dink on device, he's got to fall off. He's going to take that bomb elsewhere, let Glaive do his magic in mid once again. Yep, the bananas and pajamas really don't have anything to work with in this round. Glaive with two kills, and what is just USPs remaining here for the ninjas? Yeah, Astralis all looking to get one of their five a day in, in this round as they start to push on in. Dupree. He's got a double lying in wait, and he does check left, doesn't check right, and Lecro is good to double tap him down. But this should, in def I say should, it definitely is the round for Astralis, right? If uh, Lecro was able to pull that 1v4 out of the bag, I would have been screaming, but he's not. And as such, I'm not screaming yet. Nine rounds on the board for Astralis. Now, another investment coming in for Nip. I think one thing you really got to give some, some credit the way of Nip for is they've done a much better job in the early round of kind of whittling away at the Astralis game plan, right? They've been very, very active in probing both down towards ramp and the B side of the map. And I think that's been pretty instrumental because NIP's T side, they always had smokes and molotovs left in the post plant. And you can use them to your advantage in such a big way, especially at this A site over on Vertigo. Oh. That hasn't really been the same story for Astralis. Instead, they've had to win these gunfights out heads up. And NIP, I will say, you know, first half, it looked like they were matching and even outdoing the Astralis firepower pound for pound. But since moving into this T half, it has just been the individuals shining through over on the Astralis side. In spite of all this extra utility that NIP are able to hold time and time again, they even do a great job of rationing it out on the CT side, right? In a lot of these retakes, we see them moving in with ample utility to get the job done. Now, this one is going to be a three on five retake at the A site unless Ooh, something dear. changes. And with Dupree getting all the way through B, he can make the call to Astralis that this side of the map is clear and it's likely an A side stack. Yeah. 
uh, instead of just telling the bomb to rotate, which would be what many people would do here, is, is just flank, like Dupree. You just clear out A from behind. Now NIP know they're being flanked, and they're going to get executed upon. They've got to look two ways at once. They don't have enough eyes for the prize, and Astralis are looking to finish off the job. One man, and now known men. Ten on the board for Astralis. They get the A site under control. And yeah, you say it yourself, Harry, you know, the individuals are looking so much better in this half. We even had NIP you start this half off with four rounds in a row. And ever since Astralis have closed that two on one out on the A site against Twist, they have yet to drop a round. Four in a row, right back. Well, you know, you, you look at the side of Astralis too, and you think numbers wise, Device, Glaive, both been relatively quiet in this game up to that, that halftime point. And barring the rounds that Nip picked up in the beginning of this half, they began to turn it around. Yeah, Zipex as well has had a, a real resurgence, right? Him and Majisk have been fragging most of the game together, but even finding opening kills now for Zipex, not always what he's uh, he's there for Astralis, but to, you know, to good effect, getting picked up this A side of the map, starting off strong. Device going to be joining him, finding Rez. There's still more players for NIP looking to fight the ramp, and with a gun drop, Device now knows it. He sees the weapon fall, and he knows NIP are peering. Nor gets tagged, falling off from short, and Astralis is just going to be methodical in taking this round. Nice. Yeah, the cleanup crew is in. This A-side belongs to Astralis, and once again, Dupree is committed to a B-side wrap coming in in the back line. It's only up against these pistols, so this round was pretty much dead to rights from the get-go. But they keep it flawless, and that's important. We've seen these pistols get away with a little mo bit more than perhaps they should in the past. So that round found cleanly by the Danes. Now, I, I think a real talking point coming into this round. Finally, there's AWPs back in the hands of NIP, and you heard that right. It's AWPs, plural. Nork and Twist going to be donning them. I think that's one of the most exciting things about this NIP squad is the AWPing potential, right? Yeah. And the double AWP of Twist and Nork specifically is one that looks very, very dangerous. And it's great because you've got two players who can wield it to a very good effect here on the NIP side. Now, this is definitely going to increase the likelihood that we see them go for this ramp peak. And they will look to do that. I feel like, you know, when we've had the M4s versus the AKs, NIP have been getting outclassed. But here we go. That AWP arrives and puts up a kill nice and early on the board. It is traded, or at least equalized out by Device. But there is Rez to immediately retake the no. man. Advantage Woo. Device catches him, trying to get back up short side. And so he keeps this in a three on three. Even odds now for Astralis as Dupree gets caught crossing middle. Plopski. Returns an IP to the driver's seat in this one. Yeah, Dupree's been having a really rough game as well. He's one and six, and I, I feel like that's uh, one and six in opening duels, and I feel like that's somewhat of the part of Astralis is struggling, right? When you don't have your 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 key man who, who's so good at getting those opening frags on the bomb sites, when he's struggling, well, you can tell. And so other players have had to step up to fill in that void, but it's still a winnable round for Astralis. That bomb plant getting caught by Nork, and Device is now left in the clutch. He's going to try and deal with a flying. Oh, he hits it. Okay. And now he's got to watch out for the AWP as well. That's where he was initially intending to go. But if he peeks back up on this ramp, he peeks into Twist, who's posted. It's a very open plant, but the flashbang is excellent. And Device, they're buying more and more time. The smoke on the bomb. He doesn't have a gun to spam it, so he will just get them right off. But the tap will force a fight, and Twist is going to go out wide winning the round for NIP after all. It comes close, but it's still going to be a Swedish round. Now, people might be asking, well, who the hell is Nock? Well, let me tell you, Nock comes from a very, very short but listed background. He spent a lot of time in existence. Galaxy goes to Gamer Legion. He then finds himself on the Ninjas of Pajamas. One of his more notable accomplishments, at least, you know, from our end, would have to be the fact that, well, he, he goes to DreamHack winner, they lose to Bravado. That was with Existence Galaxy, but he really makes a name for himself there, DreamHack winner 2018. So I think that that was about the, the motion right there. I think that was a, a lot of eyes on him. They did end up losing to Bravado, but third, fourth, and you got your name on the board. Now you're playing with Nip. And with 14 rounds on the board, you might just about to be beating Astralis. Yeah, that's breaking a five-round streak from Astralis as well, right? So it does make sense why, do they, why they have money, but, you know, even just getting back on the board can change everything for NIP. It makes Astralis question their previous round. It makes them try and do something differently. And they try and send Dupree towards B. He's now one and seven in opening duels. Once again, going down, being the first man to fall for Astralis. The spam is there. Zipnix is so ready for it. And IP keep trying to use it against Astralis in this game, but it's getting denied. And I mean, where do you even go from here? 
You're getting pressured back on A. The utility's finding damage. You've lost a man. Glaive has taken middle, but he's never got more, more than one in this position. He's going to try and push ahead of the smoke. That's a good heads up play. There's a, a dude on the left as well, rotating off of B, as well as Rez here in the spawn. And oh, Glaive gets caught. Rez finding another advantage for NIP. It's a five on three right now. Astralis are getting taken down tooth and nail. Magisk on 10. Oh, that should have been the kill, Twist. What is going on? Oh, this is such an awkward little angle, but Twist has wormed his way into a nice spot there. Spots the ramp, didn't see anyone, and now tries to go through this smoke. Catches a very unfortunate timing onto Magisk. And as well as that, Device was the man nearby. Not the gun you would want to trade that out with the AWP in his hands. Also didn't give, want to give away that there's another player here by missing that shot. Ooh. Device getting into this site, helped out by Zipex. Device shutting down another. And a bomb plant now found here at the very bare minimum for Astralis. Never oh, mind, Letcro catches the timing up through the B ramp. I thought Device at least had the bomb plant locked in, but just a millisecond too soon. Cut short by Letcro on that flank round. And now map point for NIP on their map pick of Vertigo. Yeah, this is ultimately the start if you're the Ninja's Pajamas that you've wanted. You woke up today and you're thinking, man, if we could just win one map over Astralis, there's a real chance for us in this series. Well, that's the thing. There's a chance, obviously. And like, not that I'm counting Nip out after they sit on map point, but the follow-up maps are, are, are home maps for Astralis. Nuke and uh, Inferno, of course. Uh, it's not like NIP are going to be you know, celebrating too much. They haven't won the series yet. And there's always the, I'd say, if anything, high likelihood they don't because Astralis, we know what they can do with these comebacks. Either way, the end of this series, either of these teams were at one point likely to celebrate at O'Leary's, but that's not the case anymore. Now, very quietly, Astralis, they know what's on the outside of this. Just one round separates them from an L on this map. Just waiting on a little bit of contact. A lot of noise being made now. They're going to go ahead and drop them all to to clear out sandbags just to make sure that's one less thing they have to worry about. Glade really leading the charge. Runs out AK first. Can't find the second kill, but that's all right. He's got teammates, and they're there for a reason. This should be an easy bomb plant. Twist trying to get out of dodge, and will get a kill on his way. And surely they're considering it in this motion. So there it is. That's... That's going to be the save call. They want to get out of there, but also a little bit of pressure. I mean, Dupree found him, found his way into the back lines before. Who's to say he wasn't going to do it again? And that's got Twist just a little off guard as to who from Astralis could be lingering around. Yeah, Astralis really give Nip a taste of their own medicine in that round there, right? That T-side draws so many parallels to how NIP were playing theirs. And that is, you know, you do just kind of spread out early on, but you don't look for any of these early engagements. Then you group up over at ramp side with NIP not challenging in this round. It allowed a lot of control to go the way of Astralis. And then they just five-man execute into the bomb site. And the five players of Astralis, perhaps unsurprisingly, beat the three-man hold of NIP here. Uh, and that was something, you know, the NIP were doing a hell of a lot. As we say, it was very much this style of just grouping five guys up late in the round, taking the map control you've been given, and then using your sheer number advantage to just take away key areas of the map from the opposition. Well, do or die right now for Astralis. Still a winnable game. They're going to need three rounds for overtime. NIP. Low economy, a solo rifle. Twist is spotting on B, but not going to have a huge amount of information due to that wood in the way. Luckily, Astralis aren't putting pressure there. Just Glaive holding the bottom of B. The rest of Astralis working up that A ramp once again. Grenades onto the sandbags. Don't really need a molly on an antico like this. You know, that's... Uh, if there's a player there without armor, that grenade's going to kill them, or at least put them on, like, one health. So... Strauss don't need to worry about it too much longer, but the 
methodical as ever. Molotov still going out across the site. It's going to push players back. Device looking for a pick on this A side of things. There's the Molly eventually. Astralis don't have to worry about it at all. Completely gone from their minds. And NIP stacked up on the site. Device looking for a cross kill. It's Zipnix to find first blood, but Rez gets a trade, and that's a gun gifted over. He is low, but even a weapon is going to be huge for NIP in this round. Astralis need multi kills Aww. now, and Glaive can only get one. Once again, Astralis put in a predicament. They've got to run right back. Oh boy. And here it is. What could potentially decide the entire map here? Twist lying in wait with only his USP. He's got to have some sort of early warning. Plopsky's going to be there. Mm. Thank goodness for Nip's sake. Oh. Well, I say that. Plopsky's able to get Magist down to 8 HP, but they don't know Twist is in the back of the site. Good shots from Twist. Takes down Dupree. Just 8 HP on Magisk. What's going to be the play here? Both just kind of squeaking around each other inside of the site. The AK is going to come out and be successful. Oh, now 30 no. HP versus eight. Here comes Rez from the B ramp and a quick swing, a quick tap and a quick round for what is the Ninjas of Pajamas putting this one away. This map is going to go in the way of the Swedes. We're going to be looking at that second map of the series being Nuke. The pick of Astralis next. Of course, 16 to 12, the final.